Hello everybody, I'm Peter Gallop and it's my lovely assistant Crystal. Hi. And today we are reviewing Ruby Volume 5 Chapter 4. As you may know, it that yesterday it was is officially on YouTube. So so you haven't seen it, go watch it now. So was this a Yang centric episode with Weiss and Ruby? Yes, it is. And why are you questioning this? I don't know. I just thought, you know, the first centric episodes about these girls will basically have them separate and not unite them. Well, it was kind of like that for most of the time. But let's not go to this details. Let's go to... To... No, oh, well, we immediately go to the discussion with that. I thought we were going to first go to Ruby because it was not exciting. Yeah, but you usually go and your favorite things to your least favorite thing. Well, that's true. Now, what happened with Yang's story was basically continuing that t it that band that d idiot that who was that thing from the first chapter. And he basically took her there and he was basically like, Ha! Huh, I lead you there in the trap. And yes, I... You know what I was hoping Yang would say that scene was basically... You do know, here's where I wanted to come, right? I mean, you do know that, right? <laughs> it was... That would be definitely more hilarious if you think about it. Also... Yeah. And now we have an awesome battle scene, which is good. And then... And then we basically go to... Uh, walking in into the camp with the bandit tribe. And everybody suddenly all focus. Considering the fact that no one seems to think that Yank is Raven's, Raven's daughter. Which is kind of weird if you think about it. I mean, Yank and Raven are kind of the same. I mean, the only thing that really would catch you off guard is the fact that Raven's constantly has red eyes and black hair. I mean, you, you can't even tell the difference in reality if, you know, they were, you know, if you, they swap clothes and, and ties and all that stuff. I mean, Yank literally looks like Raven's daughter. So how did no one know that? I don't know. Now the real big questionable part I have to ask is about this episode is why the fuck did Raven thought that Yank will be like, I finally found you after several years of searching you and begin falling my little sister going away and yeah seriously yeah serious i mean seriously raven did you really expect that that she would came to ask you for a favor i mean seriously and you know what i must ask about this about you rooster thief or whoever's working ruby is are people aware that of this, how it's going in Ruby, because there's a lot of questionable stuff. I mean, think about it. I'm for it doesn't seem like anyone in Menagerie knows everything about the whole thing that happened there, well, except the fact that it was destroyed. That's literally all that seem people seem to know about there. Well, the, the what happened there. Well. I mean, they don't seem to know the Yangs, the Blake's apart, or the Shni was on the same team as daughter of the, the of the Shni family, and neither did it seem like Raven knew that. Also, if I the only one here who is disturbed, and how her Raven semblance works, because this time they explain it, they explain that her semblance is basically allowing. In portals to open to whoever she's bound with, so that means they have multiple 
pointless portals or something? I don't know really. But seriously. Just think about it. About it. Crow is a brother, so they were more than like likely they came out the same you know, the same woman. Diane went into her with her you know and she pushed Yang out. Is that so is that kinda weird? If you think about it. And uncomfortable. Really uncomfortable. Yeah, but it's kind of weird to think about it. Also, I am wondering what's her connection to Ruby. Now that I think about it. I mean, really think. She only said, so apparently for her, Ruby wasn't a lost cause until Yang mentioned that she's with Crow. So... What is her opinion with Ruby? Or about Ruby, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. And yeah, after the whole debate and her being disappointed that a person she abandoned for mo her entire life ca came and the first thing was to for a person that was always with her, she basically said that she needs to get out. Even though technically Yang's stronger than most of your bandits, except maybe be the you know the maiden. She's possibly the only one that she actually can lose against. But again, we haven't seen them in battle, so it's hard to tell. And then what happens is this first guy that attacks Yang is basically one punch out, and then reveals wise. And it was just. Hilarious what happened. Why is like Yang and Yang's like wise? Like how they all both been shocked to see each other there. Which I guess does make sense. It is why it's like stop. Oh it's time to get serious. And she basically makes her little warrior giant. Which I must ask. Wouldn't it be easier, easier, easier if you, you know, give that guy a bigger sword? Or, you know, you had, um, be, or, you know, had that sword over there and then just make it grow if you can make that so easily. Kind of confusing to think about it. Yeah. And after to that, that whole breakout with why that was awesome, she basically goes to and gets... And basically, you know, they have a little dog. Well, you see that woman over there? That's my mom. And she can take us to Ruby. Which, I must seriously question. When in Volume 4, did they ever hint at that? That they'll meet up so soon? I mean, honestly, it feels like more they mentioned with Ye or Ye Blake, the whole meeting up thing, than any one of the other ones. That's true. I guess they didn't want to hint at it because they didn't know how, which way they're gonna meet up. So this way was pretty good. And then, also you forgot to mention the fact that when they, when yet when Yang tell Wise that that, that she, her mom can take her, them to Ruby, she's basically like, wait, wait, your mom kidnapped me? <laughs> yeah, and then Yang's like, you kidnapped her. Because, yeah, see, that, that was kind of a dumbass thing if you ask me, Yang, seriously. I mean, why would Wai Shni at all be in a cage with her arms tied up in the Emerald Forest? That's what that forest is called, right? Yes. How stupid. And then they basically, after that, they literally tried to escape. The maiden stops them. And then she tells them that they need to be in the tent. Which, wait. What is Raymond's plan for now? I mean, so she's gonna let Wise go? And I know that she wants Yang to be a part of her, her tribe, but does she plan to, you know, manipulate Yang and Wise to join them? So, 
she could get a lot of money from Wise, and then having Wise, you know, do something to to get control of Dust, so they'll forever have Dust or something. I don't know. I'm really curious about that. I'm guessing that she's just gonna be. I'm guessing she's just going to try to convince Yang to join them, and so and then for Wise to be back in the case or something. I don't know really. Although I am wondering, doing something about Ruby, if Raven and Crown are of stuff, how how much do anyone else knows? Because well, Iron would probably know. So does the so does Lionheart and whoever's in charge of Valkyrie. But Valkyrie has a bunch of thieves and those stuff, so would that make sense? And how does Aspa even rank them by trustworthy scale? I mean, it doesn't make sense. Let's check that in the next time they go back. We need to check that. Let's instead go to the other story, which was Ruby. Man, he's a good sucker punch. We cut to Ruby basically joining hand to hand combat. Oh, can I have this complaint about the Ruby training hand to hand combat this time? Alright, you can have it. Well, as we see a little bit, Ruby is, as we expect, pretty shitty in hand to hand combat. I mean, just one good punch and Oscar, and that's it. Nothing else. But that leaves the question, if Ruby can't battle head-to-head -head combat really that well, why do they train her like, like she needs to? I mean, think about it. Her semblance would help a lot more at getting, dodging at, and then, you know, grabbing a weapon or anything else. It would make a lot more sense to teach her how to use, you know, things that she might come and find on battlefield or something. I mean, seriously, think about it. I'm pretty sure that it will be easier for her to, you know, do use something like um, anything to beat them. And also, how will that help? I mean, as far as we know, Cinder will be a long range attacker, so Ubi is basically going to have to, you know, get close and consider that Cinder seems to be incredibly. And considering the fact that Cinder also seems to be really trained with swords, really dangerous swords in hand-to-hand -hand combat, it wouldn't really make sense to battle her like that. Tyrion is a freaking psycho who just getting too close to him could basically kill you. For Doctor Watts we don't know, but still he might have some kind of a trick that allows him to, you know, do something. And then we have Hazel, a guy who Ruby could never beat. I mean, these are just the four main fighters. I mean, just imagine all the other fighters, like a lieutenant or somebody like that. And why would head to head be even be so useful against a Grim? I mean, think about it. Salem is basically the immortal Grim. So why would it make sense for her to learn how to hand to hand combat a Grim, a being that's literally not effective? Seriously, even Yang had a problem with taking down one Grim. I remember, her entire fighting style is based on hand-to-head -hand combat. How does that even make sense? Honestly, except Dust in her in those shotgun rifles or whatever she has the code of the Yang has, how would that help a little bit at all? Seriously, her battle techniques should always be get disarmed, dodge. Maybe take three hits and then, but after the three hits, she gets taken down. Go down. That's what they should really do with Ubi. I mean, three direct hits and defeat it. That if we went to and had combat. But yeah, but that's already the main focus in there. The main focus in this was basically Oscar and Semblance. Which is pretty good. I like how they explain it, how it's basically linked to the emotions and how it basically works. It's pretty good. 
Also, it is kind of interesting how, when they activate them. Rens activate when he's, you know, in our stress, where being emotional is the worst possible thing out there. Ruby's activates when she's practicing, probably with Crimson Rose, when she really does need speed to help her because she doesn't really have the strength to fight it. And Nora just because electricity struck her. I guess her Samus was always unlocked. She just didn't realize it until when she got electrocuted. But John doesn't have summons. Which I am wondering, what kind of an emotion can he would would really help would make sense for John? I mean, yes, he's loyal and that, but a lot of fires are loyal, so it doesn't make sense. I'm guessing it's going to be some. I'm guessing it's gonna be something that's basically going to be. Like an antidote sort of thing, you know, like, wh when he activates it, he can literally destroy a green by one touch or something like that. Or like, you know, something. I'm gonna say he's sending some kind of a weakening thing for Grim, like the aging or something. Because remember, older Grim is, stronger it becomes. Yeah, it's probably like something like that. No. Since apparently we also learned that when Oscar, Oscar and Soul comes into a person or a new wear, they use they don't really have they don't have the same semblance as the previous wear hats. So yeah, pretty weird. I don't really know. Oh, this was a pretty questionable app about what the fuck happened. Really wondering. I mean, the thing, I mean, everything was pretty decent, but you wonder how much do people really know? Or how much does anyone fucking know of these people who are pretty aware of Salem and that? And except the whole complaint with Ruby, uh, Ruby had to hand combat, which I'm pretty sure no one's gonna be happy with. Or at least you know not like cool. It was a pretty decent episode. I agree. I mean, although a lot of things are, are like question, like which I mean seriously. So sh yeah, Raven wasn't aware. Was aware when she's about things about to die, but she's not aware when about her teammates. I mean, she clearly. Even though it would be pretty easy to spot them, considering the fact that they were on a vital festival, where pretty much everyone was watching. But yeah, even all that, there was a pretty decent episode. I mean, better than some episodes in Volume 4, definitely. Yeah. Now, I hope you liked this video. I hope you're gonna leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. And that's it. I gotta wait to see you next time. Bye.